Week 10 is almost in the books. And guess what? The Jets suck. It's time to do a mock draft after this. And we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your friend Dom C here with an episode of the Project Prospect Podcast. And man, I just watched an awful, unmitigated disaster in front of my eyes for the past three hours, watching Arizona and Kyler Murray just absolutely dismantle the New York Jets to a tune of something along the lines of 31-6. Unbelievable, unbearable, but this is where we are. Uh, what better time than now to get in a little bit faster than we all had hoped as Jets fans and, and start talking about the 2025 NFL draft. But before we do that, let's get some of the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, if you can, please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications on the channel. Uh, YouTube algorithm really looks at those things and and really thinks highly of it if you do so. Drop some comments in the Discord. Um, let's, let's talk about what you like, what you don't like, my thoughts, your thoughts, um, all that stuff goes a long way for the YouTube algorithm really helps me out. But, you know, here we are again, middle of November talking mock draft. What better time than now? I'm going to just go ahead and get into this thing. Um, because there's not, not too much to talk about after week 10, uh, I've set the rankings as per Tankathon of what they would have them being. Jacksonville is here going to be on the first pick. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time. We're not going to go too in depth. Just really get some names out there so you guys can, um, you know, kind of get a feel of what I'm thinking here in November. Obviously, a lot's going to change, and we're going to have a lot to say about it. So um, I set up the draft order. Why don't we just get into this? And for me, uh, this is a no-brainer. Like I said, um, Jacksonville is here, number one. You can go a plethora of different ways, but for me, I'm going to take, um, you know, the most polarizing talent in this class here in wide receiver cornerback Travis Hunter. I think personally his tape shows uh, very him better as a cornerback. Uh, I think in the NFL he'll choose or he'll want to play wide receiver. The idea of him playing both ways. Um, a lot of the time or, or, you know, more than half of the time is, is kind of unreasonable, but, um, you know, the talent is undeniable. He's, he, he's an extremely rare, unique polarizing player, um, can really dominate athletically from at both sides of the ball. So, uh, you know, Jacksonville just needs some talent, man. Um, they got the quarterback to build around. They got a couple weapons here. Um, they could absolutely use a tackle, but there's no one worth, the pick here at number one, especially when you have, you know, one of the few blue chips in this class and Travis Hunter. So I'm going to go ahead and make the, make the pick there. Number two, again, another easy one for me. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the Daniel Jones experiment has, you know, probably gone on about two or three years too long now. Um, like I said, I think he's a decent player. I really do. You know, I, I think he's going to find his niche as a bridge quarterback or, or a, a high end backup that won't do too much to lose your games. The problem is he doesn't elevate the talent around him. And it's time um, if Brian Dayball and Joe Shane are going to keep their jobs, I think the, the Mariners are going to give them the opportunity to, you know, finally take a swipe at a quarterback. And for me, that that quarterback is Cam Ward. Um, you watch what he's doing this year again 22 year old quarterback in his third at his third college here you know with the u um you know reminds me of a of a young gunslinging brett Favre in his early early days you know he's got the arm talent uh enough athleticism um you know it, but plays a little recluse at times you know puts the ball way too much into harm's way at times but you know uh, you know to to be the man you got to be the to be the man. You got to be the man. And, and his throws, you know, he plays with confidence. He plays with moxie, and and that's what I love about Cam Ward's game more so is that he's gonna get up there and he's gonna keep going. Right? Um, you know, to me, this is a perfect fit for the next generation 
of this Giants rebuild. Again, people got to remember the Giants are still rebuilding. You know, I know that the year one, 10 win, nine win team, you know, under Dayball, playoff win kind of uh, sped up the process, but, you know, they're, the roster still needed to be built. There's pieces there. I think Cam Ward's a guy that one of the few guys that you can kind of turn the keys over to him. And, and yeah, you're going to take some lumps as it goes on, but you get a guy in there like Dable. He's going to love his athleticism. Dable's going to be able to, you know, kind of settle him down, I think. And and for me, it's just a, a match made in heaven. You know, it leads me up to Tennessee here. Um, I think Tennessee would also be dying for Cam Ward. Uh, but they're going to take the next best, next best, best option. And it's quarterback Shadur Sanders. Um, you know, Sanders does not have the arm talent that Cam Ward does. Sanders also doesn't have probably the uh, athletic ceiling that Cam Ward does. You know, what Sanders does offer is a, a strong mind and, under, you know, a good process or an understanding of what he's looking at both pre-snap and post-snap. Um, you know, slender build comes with a, you know, comes with a lot of baggage in, in that, you know, prime, you know, coach prime, being coach prime son, uh, a lot of expectations around him, but man, I think the kid plays very, very tough. He stands in there, takes hits, it has been battered, bruised and battered throughout his, you know, tenure here at Colorado while they have had no or rebuilding this offensive line, you know, but, um, you know, the, the kid's a gamer, man. Um, like I said, I, I like the mental um, toughness and the mental fortitude that he has to play the position. I, I think, you know, you, you tie him up with Callahan and, you know, you and eventually you build some weapons around him. They continue to put some resources towards the offensive line. Um, you know, they got J.C. Latham. They got Peter Skronsky. They're going to need somebody on the right side, which they can probably address later on in this draft. But, um, you know, you, you have to find the guy who's going to lead you to that next step. And and for me, um, I think coach prime son Shador will take his talents to Nashville. So leads me to the Cleveland Browns here at number four, interesting situation they're in, man. You know, I think we all know that the Deshaun Watson thing has to kind of be put, you know, put the rest, you know, the, the reality is, is that he is, probably going to still be on this roster that that contract is just a monstrosity i don't know how you get out of it um i don't know if there's another quarterback here that you're ready another quarterback in this class that i'm comfortable on, <clears throat> on handing the keys over and letting them lead your organization on top of that there's still so many um different things that this defense and offense and this team needs um you know stefanski's a good coach you know, Jim Schwartz is, you know, uh, you know, been hit or miss, you know, on the defensive side. And, and and for me, I think you just need to keep stacking, you know, um, high level athletes and, and, and talented, you know, quasi blue chippers here in this draft. And, you know, for me, if, if I can't get my hands on Cam Ward or Shador Sanders for Cleveland, I'm thinking one of two ways. Uh, I'm thinking Ash and Genty, the running back out of Boise State or I'm thinking a piece along the defensive line. And for me, when I weigh it out, um, the defensive interior is, has been an, an ongoing issue for Cleveland. So I'm going to go ahead and soak up Mason Graham. Um, he can come in. He's played all along the defensive line in Michigan. He's played, you know, one, three, five. He's even played out in, in, on the edge at, at times. Um, you know, big, strong, stout build. Um you know, physical, you know, I, I really like his pass rush skills inside pressing the pocket. I think he's, you know, stout enough against the run. Um, but I think where he really excels is, you know, how quick he, you know, how quick he reacts, how quick he counters to what the offensive line's doing. I think he's going to be a, a, a vital piece in whatever team drafts him. And for me, um, you know, the, the talent, uh, the talent here matches the need. So to me, it's a no brainer. Cleveland will go, Look at one of these, you know, uh, quote unquote project quarterbacks in the in the second or third round. Um, it leads me to the Raiders again. Another situation where, man, I don't know what, you know, I, I don't know what's up or down. They don't know what's up or down from here. I don't know if the coach is going to be there. Um, you know, is Al Davis going to fire or Mark Davis going to fire a, another coach and now be paying three head coaches, the new one he brings in and the and the previous two? I don't think so. 
Um, so they're in, you know, they're in flux. They're another team that needs a quarterback. Um, I know that they still have a, a, a bridge quarterback in play under, um, you know, for another year, you, you got AOC as well. And, and, and he might be able to be that piece that carries you over again. For me, I'm going to look at this team and say, how can I manufacture wins? How can I build a solid base? The one thing that they've been missing outside of, you know, uh, you know, average quarterback play, I think the defense is in good shape. You can need some pieces on the backside. Like Will Johnson's definitely in, in consideration for this pick. Um, but you get a talent like Ashton Genty. Um, I know pick five might be too high for some in, in terms of the running back and positional value, but but he's a special talent. And, and, and we've seen in the past Bijan Robinson. Um, we saw Jamar Gibbs go, you know, relatively high in the, you know, in the first round. We saw Saquon Barkley go number, you know, what two or three overall in his draft. Um, and those were guys that had really high expectations coming out of college that were able to maintain or live up to those expectations. There's no reason for me to think that Ashton Genty won't be that. Um, so whether or not you roll it back with the combination of AOC and Gardner Minshew for a year while you develop another quarterback um, that you'll grab later, I just don't think that there's one here that I'm ready and comfortable to draft and and turn the keys over to. So at, at that point, you again, you, you take – um, a high a high end piece at a position of need. That's all I'm doing is I'm matching up, you know, player talent and need here, and I'm taking Ashton Genty here at number five for the for the Oakland Raiders or oh, Oakland Las Vegas Raiders. Excuse me, Raiders fans, don't get at me in the in the comments here. Leads me to Miami. Um, right now, Tankathon has them picking number six. They could go higher or lower based on what they do. They don't play until Monday night. Again, this is being filmed on Sunday night. Um, and they're going to have a lot of questions around them as well. Like, you know, I think that a healthy Tua tag of Iloa and, and, you know, and those skill position pieces all come back and kind of regain the, the level of play that they were playing at. You know, there's still some places on that defense that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, I don't know if Javon Holland is going to come back. You know, the, the finances might, um, you know, might tell you after, might tell you differently now that they're, you know, still paying a lot of guys. They just paid Jalen Ramsey a big contract. Um, you gave Austin Jackson the right tackle a big contract. Obviously, Tua and Jalen Waddle and, and Tyree Kill all, all getting paid. Um, so, you know, when you pay all these guys for, for win now windows, some of the guys that are coming up for contracts, you might just not fit under the uh, under the cap. So, um, you know, I thought about Malachi Starks here, uh, but for me, uh, again, I think the idea of protecting Tua at all costs is of paramount importance. So, for me, um, I'm going to take Will Campbell here, the tackle out at LSU. You know, I know that the the talks that happen from now until. April when he's drafted, is he a guard? Is he a tackle? He's a very good football player, you know, and I'll just leave it at that. A lot along the same lines, again, lazy, you know, lazy comparison along the same lines of Peter Skronsky, where some people thought, you know, he could be a good tackle, but he could be an excellent guard. I think you're going to hear a lot of those same things because of the, you know, the lack of arm length for Will Campbell. But um, the proof is in the pudding, the skill set and, and, and the numbers are there for him at LSU. Um, I would be comfortable starting him at left tackle. And guess what? The Dolphins have holes all along that offensive line. You know, I think Austin Jackson is kind of set in stone. They drafted Patrick Paul that last year who, you know, um, still needs some developing. But at worst comes to worst, if you put Patrick Paul left tackle, you can just move Will Campbell into guard if it doesn't work out. Or if, if Patrick Paul's um, development starts to stunt or gets delayed, you can always kick Will Campbell outside. That versatility of of high end talent that Will Campbell offers is something that um, interests me here for the Miami Dolphins and leads me up to number seven with the Patriots. Who would have thought that the Patriots, um, you know, in this tank would uh, would not be picking the top three? Now again, it's November. Nothing's set in, set in stone yet. They still could be there, but um, they're another team that has you know plenty of holes um, all over the place. The offensive line has kind of been a little bit of mismosh, and, and and again, it's another place I can address it. And I'm going to go ahead and take my favorite tackle in this class, um, and it's Calvin Banks Jr. Well, 
Why didn't I take him for Miami, you ask? Um, I could have, you know, but but I think that, like I said, I, I like the versatility that Will Campbell offers and, and, you know, Miami having some pieces around, you know, they could use a little bit more of that chess piece. For me, Calvin Banks is going to, you know, he has – the he has the size he has the length he has that mean streak in him he can you know get up there and and probably stay at tackle throughout his nfl career um you know he's just a big guy um i i love the way he uses his hands um you know very aggressive smart um doesn't let guys get into his chest you know big powerful build um and a lot to like about an offensive lineman, you, you see a lot of that, those similarities and, and those skill sets in Kelvin Banks. So he's going to be my pick here and you protect your, uh, you know, your prize quarterback, um, Drake Mays blindside for the next couple of years to come. Um, the Saints here at number eight. Um, again, this is a, a, a pick that can go a bunch of different ways, right? Um, you know, they just made a trade and traded March on Lattimore next year. I don't know. What the status of Paulson Adebo, um, his leg injury, plus him being on a expiring contract. To me, it's a team that's just void of talent all over the defense and the offense. So, again, I'm looking at this draft class here, and and I'm going to say I'm going to take probably what I'm what I think is you know the best talent available that matches up with a position of need here for the Saints. Um, you know, this actually, you know, I, I should I, I should preface this might be a sneaky place for quarterback. Um, I don't know what the contract status is or or how much they'd have to swallow to get out of the car contract. But I do know that the Saints are perennially in seller cap hell. So I don't know if adding that much more dead cap is, is kind of a wise move. You know, for now, they're just going to keep kicking cans down the road. Um, so go ahead and give me Will Johnson. He can line up opposite cool and McKinstry. And at least you have, um, two solid, you know, um, focal point foundation pieces on the outside, you know, um, yeah. Is it the best allocation of resources considering you spent the second round pick on cool and McKinstry? Probably not, you know, it some might say, but the, the cupboard's barren, right? Um, Alante is much better suited off to play slot, um, and, and now you have at least a, a building block of foundation on the back end of your defense between Will Johnson, Alante in the slot, and, and Kula McKinstry on one side. And and you go from there, and you, you figure out how to piecemeal some of the other stuff. Like I said, there's not a lot of this offensive line group outside of these top two. They're, they're good. There's no one else I don't think is worthy of top ten. Um, you could have – you know, you, you could have – I could argue – Wide receiver might be a bigger need, um, but I think the depth in the wide receiver class is probably a little bit better as you go down. Um, and now that they have an extra third and extra fourth round pick, it's going to give them some more options. So uh, to me, again, m- looking at looking at the need and matching it up with the best player on the board, that gives me Will Johnson here. Number nine, New York Jets. You all know I'm a Jets fan, um, and, and I'm going to preface this by saying, man, I, I – have never thought that I would be so disappointed in a team as I am after 10 games this year at three and seven, you know, it's not the worst team. Yeah. You know, I know the co-tight error was bad. I know the Adam Gase error was bad. I know bowl sucked, but just the expectations and, and the talent on paper you thought could live up and match those expectations. But um, how wrong I was. Why that's why it's so disappointing. So here's where I stand with the Jets. You know, you there's going to be a lot of holes. Um, you know, you got a lot of one year deals that are going to be dissipated. And the question is more so not necessarily what happens with this number nine overall pick with the Jets, but who's leading? Who's leading the charge? You know, who's the GM? Who's the head coach? Who are his coordinators? All that stuff is, I think, what has really, really been a crux in in the Jets. Uh, a kink in the Jets' armor for the past five, six years, uh, at least through the Salah and Joe Douglas uh, regime. But I'm assuming that there's going to be clean sweep. I'm also assuming that Aaron Rodgers is coming back. Um, I just don't think that if this year goes off that bad, um, I don't think that his pride is going to allow him to, you know, just kind of hang it up. 
Um, and, and honestly, I think, you know, speaking fiscally, I think it's for the Jets, you know, the Jets' best option is that he doesn't retire this year because he's going to have to swallow, you know, a, a big chunk of that cap, almost 60 something million dollars if he does retire. Again, if he, if he designated post June 1st, you can split it up, but it's still 30 or 45 million dollars. So um, I'm assuming he's coming back. I'm assuming he's going to want to run it one more year into the, um, into the sunset with his boy Devante, you got Garrett still there. You still have Brees Hall. You still have weapons. All right. But what I am going to do is I'm going to draft the next in line. I know that's something that Aaron Rodgers didn't like when he was in Green Bay, but this is a whole different situation. He'll soon to be 41 years old. I think he knows that his end is near. All right. And, and like I said, there's no other quarterback that I'm in this draft class that I'm ready to turn the keys over. But there are quarterbacks that I would love to sit and learn and get the tutelage of one Aaron Rodgers while while he's here. Um, so this is a pick for the future. This is a pick for the new regime, for the new head coach, for the new coordinator. And those that know me know um, who I love in this quarterback class, but I'm not taking them. You know, I'm thinking about the long term here and 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 kind of matching up what some ceiling stuff and, and, and I'm not going to take Jalen Milrow. You know, I know you all think I'm going to take Jalen Milrow because, because I love him. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take Drew Aller from Penn state. Uh, Drew Allar is 21 years old. There's a good chance he goes back to school. Um, man, that arm is live. You know, uh, that arm is live, but he's still, a, he's still a bit slow. He's still, you know, doesn't really get through his reads. He He's afraid to take shots at times, um, you know, and, and I think some of that hesitation causes some of the accuracy issues, which he has cleaned up dramatically. Last year, Drew Allar and, and this year, Drew Allar is completely different. Um, I see the progression. I see the I see the development that he's taken, cleaned up his footwork, um, you know, but he stands in there. He's a big dude, sick, almost 6'5", 230 pounds. Um, you know, he's he's got a, a cannon for an arm, and, and he's a guy who just needs to sit and learn for a little bit. So why not sit and learn behind one of the best that ever did it? You know, even though he's not playing the best this year for the Jets, um, you know, the, this is the guy that I'm going to pick here. For the Jets, and I'm going to move on to Carolina. For me, again, one of the easier selections here. Um, yeah, I'm going to take Abdul Carter because I think it's crazy that he's still here at 10. There's a chance that he's off the board well before here. Um, you know, uh, you know, those who don't know, Abdul Carter was an off-ball linebacker, kind of transitioned to play the edge, um, you know, matches the physicality with, with, with the speed and, and that, you know that flexibility that he has to 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 get around the edge to dip rip you know he he's really learning how to be an, an edge rusher in this league and and I don't know if he's you know if he's a guy that you're going to put you know hand in the dirt and and have him rush off the edge at all times but you know he's a guy that you can move around the formations he's a guy that you can you know have stand up in an a gap you can you know and and you know and kind of mug up there and then have him drop off again with those off ball linebacker skills he's he's able to do that drop off in the zone he's a guy that you can play a lot of games with and 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 the improvements that i've seen in him from last year to this year in, in terms of you know his game plan and you know his you know the the game plan on getting at the quarterback his his moves his counter moves not just you know it, the ability for him to tra to transfer speed to power is whew, it's real good he's he's a top 10 guy for sure and and you know carolina needs you know good players good athletes so for me this is a no brainer abdul carter's pick uh it leaves me here at number 11 for Dallas. Now, this is the easy Ashley Genty spot, right? Um, but he's already off Ashton Genty, excuse me. He's already off the board. Um, that to me was a no-brainer. So, you know, it takes, you know, it, you look around that, you look around that room. I don't know if I can go ahead and take another interior, uh, another Michigan interior defense lineman for this team. You know, I know that that matches up their probably their biggest need is to fix some stuff around that. Uh, along that defensive front, um, 
Uh, so I'm going to do it, but I'm just not going to do it in the middle. For me, you know, I think there's uh, multiple ways that you can help improve the run defense, and it's not, you know, you you got to assume that, um, you know, some of these younger kids that they've drafted in the past and in the interior are going to continue to develop. Um, you know, and, and like I said, I just don't know if, you know, a guys like Kenneth Grant or guys like Deion Walker or, or you know, are <clears throat> or guys like I don't know T.J. Sanders or, or or Shamar Turner or worthy Derek Harmon another good I don't know if they're worthy of this top eleven pick. Um, I thought about the running back as well. Um, it's a very very deep running back class, which is why I'm not going to take one. But I can easily see Omarion Hampton coming off the board in in round one as well. This maybe not this high. Um, wouldn't be surprised knowing knowing Jerry Jones. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take an edge rusher. Again, I think you can help the defense by putting in a, a solid edge rusher in there as well. Um, kind of fortify, you know, strengthen the edge. Um, a, a guy that has some size, doesn't have to leave the field, has some has some pass skill sets as well, you know, can help you on both uh, on both sides. And that's – they're going to stay home and, and go Nick Scarton from Texas A&M. Again, there's lots of stuff that can happen on that defense. I thought about wide receiver here as well. Um, but for me, I, I don't know. It's just, like I said, you look at this team and, and you just look at how the defense is just getting, you know, um, dog walked game in and game out. So you have to start throwing some, some high end, some high end picks and, and try to replace or, or replenish some of the, the depth and, and, and kind of, you know, raise the ceiling, raise the floor of some of those defensive players. Uh, Nick Scarrington, like I said, uh, 275 pounds, solid, you know, uh, good edge setting defensive end, you know, um, not scheme specific. So, you know, you want to play him in at five tech, you want to play him outside, doesn't matter. He can he can handle it. You know, reminds me a lot of Leonard Taylor um, when he came out of USC. Uh, I see a lot of his game in Nick Scarrington. So, um, actually, Nick Scarrington probably even a best, better pure pass rusher than Leonard Taylor. So, um, leaves me here at number twelve for the Colts. Uh, this is not, not going to have to talk about it too much. But Malachi Starks, defensive back, is is the area of need. Um, you could say edge rusher as well. I know they spent some capital in Leatu Latu last year. To me, I think it's defensive back corner. Maybe Starks is is just one of those guys who's probably. I don't care where you put him. He's just a football player anywhere in the backfield. I don't care if you put him, you know, at, he can play deep center field and single high. He can play a post safety. You want to bring him down the box. You want to put him in the slot. doesn't matter. I think Malachi Starks is a football player. And the Colts need football players on their on, on the, in their back seven. So I'm taking the best one for them right here, right then. Leaves me up with the Bengals at 13. Um, not a lot to talk about here. Tet McMillan. He's going to be your T. Higgins replacement. He's going to be your 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 prototypical X build to go along with Jamar Chase, another wide receiver in the first round. Um, it's crazy if you think about it for Cincinnati. They got holes on the defense as well. Wouldn't be surprised if Kenneth Grant, you know, is in consideration here, or if they talk about you know one of these other edge rushers. But that's where you know the, to me this is uh you know this is filling a need for a Zach Taylor offense that wants to throw the ball where maybe your best and and most um valuable asset is joe burrow so why not give him as much help as possible tech mcmillan like i said can come in and and, and he's an easy replace he's he's your t higgins replacement not enough enough said about that um brings me to tampa bay at 14 so they're picking a little higher they, they lost today so that moves them up a lot of different ways you can go with them um Benjamin Morrison, I think, would be a great fit for that skill, but you know, it's that edge rush. How are you going to replace Joe Try Joe Tryon, um, Shuenko, however you say his name? Um, and I'm going to do it with, you know, again, one of the more polarizing players in this class, if you ask me. Um, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, a little bit light, but and, and he has. He started out very slow this year, but he has turned it back on to the player that was once being talked about the number one or number two overall player um, in the entire 2025 draft. And that's James Pierce, right? You know, the speed, you know, the the get off on the edge. You know, I think he's more than capable. Again, only at two, 240 pounds. So I think he could stand up and do it. You know, a very good counter 
piece to what you have in Yaya Diaby on the other side. Replace Joe Tryon um, and, and you know get Todd Bowles another uh, guy to get at the quarterback. James Pierce is a you know he's one of those just like Ted McMillan for the Bengals is a perfect fit. I think James Pierce is a good fit there as well. Leaves me on the clock here with the Seattle Seahawks. Oh man. Um, I told you I didn't like this tackle class all that much, uh, but they need help. So, and they need help inside. They need help outside. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Ariante Ersere here. Yeah, now, maybe he lines up and he's your, you know, day one right tackle opposite Charles Cross and you're fine. But even at worst, you can bump him inside the guard. Um, road greater mentality for a team that wants to run the ball. Um, you know, he's improved a lot in, you know, in his footwork and his, and his hand work and his hand placement in, in past sets. He's, he's gotten a lot better this year than he was last year. This might be a little bit rich, but again, I don't think this draft class top to bottom is all that strong. So you're going to see a lot of these guys, you know, float up the board uh, more so than you have in past years. So maybe, you know, you might even want to call it, some might say a reach, um, but Ariante Ersary, like I said, I love the idea of him playing right tackle and even in a pinch if you don't want to put him in right tackle and um Abe Lucas comes back and becomes healthy somehow he hasn't been his whole career you can move um Ariante Ursary into guard and, and you're still solid there um the bears another team that needs a another team that needs a guard um so what I'm going to do here to me and this is one of my favorite fits in this entire uh, in this entire draft class, um, as I'm going to take Wyatt Mullen. He's a tackle. He's allowed zero pressures for West Virginia this year. I mean, he, he's been absolutely dominant. Um, the way he pass sets, the way he, the way he moves, the way he mirrors, the way he pass sets. Um, he's aggressive and he's, you know, not nearly as road grader esque as Ursary, you know, a, a little bit more finesse. Um, very good. The problem is, you know, his arms are going to, his arms are going to test out probably closer to 30, 31 inches. He just doesn't have the tackle length, but he is going to make one hell of a guard. He's a guy that you can plug and play probably for the next 10 to 12 years and never even think about it. Wyatt Mullen, he is probably, you know, I, I think as an overall, as an offensive lineman has one of the higher upsides in this entire class. Um, I just don't think it's going to be a tackle, even though it says tackle here. Um, the Bears draft him to play guard. Um, you, you pop him in there, and, and like I said, you don't even think about it. You protect your asset, and Caleb Williams. Rams are up on the clock. Rams are interested. They can go a bunch of different ways. Again, another team that needs a tackle. Is there one that's here? I don't know. Like you know, I, I think I think Cam Cam Williams from Texas goes back to school. Josh Josh Simmons is injured. Um, is this the spot where you kind of roll the dice and hope that he's you know, gets back from injury, maybe, or is this the place where the Rams, who are a good team, really start doing what the Jets did and kind of get your quarterback of the future? Maybe, maybe so, maybe not. Um, for me, I'm going to go ahead and, and go that avenue. Listen, Matt Stafford has had a hell of a career, but he's on the, you know, he, he's in the twilight of his uh of his days i don't think there's quarterback there that they're ready to hand the reins over you have you you have a team that drafts so well and just continues to stockpile young talent on both sides of the ball so to me it'd it, it this be a perfect transition to bring in your quarterback let him sit for a year two years um while matt stafford finishes out his career i'm gonna go ahead and take garrett nussmeyer <coughs> like i said i'm a milrow guy guys but i'm, I'm just matching up fits here and, and to me, Nussmeyer and, and, you know, his pedigree being, you know, the son of a coach, his dad's the quarterback's coach in Philadelphia, um, a, a real, you know, slick offensive mind in Sean, you know, in, um, oh my God, I almost said Sean Payton, um, in the head coach there for the Rams. Why I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Uh, you guys will tell me in the comments. Um, but man, this is a fit. I don't think, my, you know, there's a good chance Nussmeyer doesn't come out. Um, but you see this – he's only got eight starts in college, but you see the maturity. You see a kid that's going to be able to play at the next level. You see a kid that, you know, uh, can make the throws, can, you know, really stand in there. Um, still a little, you know, uh, kind of a little gun-shy at times, 
um, you know, quick feet, happy feet, gets out of the pocket a little too much. All that stuff is just experience that he's going to need to come. But like, I like the stuff that goes on between his ears, at least what he shows on the field. You know, he shows that he understands how to play the position. Um, and that's a perfect, perfect fit in LA there. Learn behind Matt Stafford, learn from some of the best offensive minds in the game and move it along. So lead me to San Francisco, another team that could use a right tackle. Um, you know, and, and another team that might be in the market for a left tackle. I know they just re-signed Trent Williams, but this to me is a perfect opportunity to roll the dice and take Josh Simmons. You know, if he's healthy, you know, he's your right tackle. And if he's not, you know, he's your next in line for Trent Williams here on the left side. Um, not a lot of holes there. Yeah, you can you can argue that cornerback might be one. You can argue that they probably you know, need to start, you know, bringing in more talent um, at wide receiver because I don't know how long Debo's going to be here. Kittle's getting old. I know they invested in Ricky Pearsall and they just paid Ayuk, who's coming off of a, you know, who will be coming off a major injury. So, um, you know, to keep that, though, that, you know, operation, that machine going, you're going to need some weapons. Uh, but to me, again, all that doesn't matter if, if the stuff up front is broken. And, uh, you know, Josh, Josh Simmons might, you know, might have an argument to be the best tackle in this class if he stayed healthy this year. He didn't, unfortunately, and 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 here we are. Um, so Josh Simmons is going to be the pick, and um, you know, San Francisco is going to probably bet on the fact that he is healthy and he is the future left tackle or right tackle for the Niners for years to come. Up at nineteen are the Denver Broncos, the Bo Nix led Denver Broncos. Need some more weapons. This is probably the most vanilla, boring fit in the world, but I, I can't get off of it. Um, give me Luther Burden to Denver. You know, uh, they got Cortland Sutton. He's your prototypical X. They need some more guys who can create and do stuff with the ball in their hands. And and that's what Luther Burden does best. You know, he may be, you know, destined to just be a slot guy, but, um, you know, the he's special with the ball in his hands, yards after the catch. You know, the, that short area quickness stuff is really good. I think he's got a good build. You know, it's a little bit short, a little bit stocky, physical, um, strong, strong hands. Does, you know, does well at the catch point. Um, you know, deceiving for 5'11". But, uh, again, he's a guy that you get the ball, get him the ball in space and let him do the rest. To me, this is, like I said, vanilla, very boring, but it's just a fit that works. Um, Falcons are up at... 20 um interesting because I, I i think this is a spot that you would love pierce for um i'm not gonna take pierce obviously i can't because he's gone so i'm between two guys here um mikhail williams is, is is an interesting one i just don't know what to make of him yet um to be honest with you struggle with some injury stuff early on um you know the talent is there you know, I don't know if you're if you're hoping to bring somebody in that could affect and help right away, or if you're drafting somebody banking on the upside. I don't know what the mentality around the Falcons and and their brass is. So for me, I'm going to get a guy here, and some might think it's a little early. I don't at all. Um, I'm going to get a guy in here that can come in and and really help this team right from the get go. I believe, right as an edge rusher, as someone who can get at the passer. He's done it now consistently. Um, for a couple years now at two different SEC schools. Give me Princely Uman Mielin uh, and, and line him up and just let him get at the quarterback, man. Um, you know, again, Falcons fans, you can get at me. I, you know, you might, you, you might prefer Michael Williams. Uh, again, he might project with a much, much higher ceiling than Prince, than Uman Mielin. Um, But you, you know, if you ask what, the one thing that this Falcons team is lacking this year, and it's just sacks and pressures on the quarterback getting home. Princely Umami Ellen has now done it, like I said, for two consecutive years. He's big enough. I think he, you know, he he's not a scheme specific guy. You want to put him out, you want to make him your um, designated pass rusher for a while or for pass rush specialist at first before you develop him into playing on more rundowns. I think he's got the body to take on a little bit more mass. He, he runs lean at about 255, 260. I think he can carry a little bit more without it affecting him 
um, overall. That to me is a perfect fit um, for someone that can come in and and really affect the game now. Um, on to the Cardinals. Um, screw you, Arizona Cardinals, for embarrassing us this week. And I just had to say that, get that off my chest. <sighs> I feel better. Give me Kenneth Grant. Give me the big one tech interior guy. Um, helps solidify some of the the you know the you know I watched the game today. Um, not a lot of beef in the middle up there. Um, not a lot of, you know, maintaining gap integrity, a lot of, leave a lot of cutback holes, man. You need somebody that can, that can really st- be stout. Um, doesn't matter if you're asking to two gap, doesn't matter if you ask him to, you know, just, you know, play one. I've seen him play some three as well. Um, Kenneth Grant is the, you know, a, you know, your prototypical, um, run stuffing interior defensive lineman and 21 is a good landing spot for him. It's, it's comfortable. Um, 22 here at the Texans, man. You watch the Texans play this year. Yes, they lost Stephon Diggs. Yes, they lost um, Nico Collins for a while. Yes, Tank Dell's now even banged up. Um, Joe Mixon's kind of getting into his twilight years. You're going to need more skill position guys. But again, I think some of those positions you can address later. Um, definitely the running back. Definitely the wide receivers a little bit deeper than this interior uh, than this offensive line class per se. Um, I'm going to go ahead and and, and f- help them fix the interior of this line, which has just been atrocious. I know today they're starting um, they're starting Patterson at center, and they moved Drew Scruggs over to guard. Or guard. I'm going to draft Tyler Booker and allow them to move Scruggs back to center and just plug and play Tyler Booker at, at left guard and and let the rest of it all work out. Man, it's it work out exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, you know. I think th- again, first round talent. Maybe do you know? Do you have a first round grade on them? Maybe not. But I, there's you know, I, I I don't see there being more than ten to twelve first round grades assigned when I'm all said and done to this class anyway. So if, if he's a guy that you like and in you know you think can come in and fit a need, then then I don't really think it's a reach. Um, Tyler Booker going twenty two is not not crazy afterthought. As we stand here in November, so uh, again, fills a need. Moved your Scruggs back to center, and um, you let Tyler, you know, you let Tyler Booker that pop in and be your left guard for the next twelve years. Chargers are up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and switch it up here for the Chargers a little bit. Uh, I know everyone says receiver. I know everyone says you know this or that. Uh, man, can you imagine Tyler Warren on that offense? Like it, Tyler Warren just. Breed to me, he smells like a you know a, a hardball kind of guy. Like this guy is just a, a an athlete. He's a weapon. Put the ball in his hands. Let him do work. Yeah, I've, you've seen him do it as a you know as a runner. You know from the Wildcat, a la Taysom Hill uh, in Penn State this year. You know I think his hands have really improved. He's a very good blocker um, already, and I think his hands have improved. He's you know improved his a lot. He had a case of the dropsies last year. Some of that has solidified. He's you know not nearly the. It doesn't have the. Um, you know the awareness and the fluidity in his in his route running that maybe you know Harold Fanner or Colson Loveland and Loveland have, um, but Tyler Warren is to me you know he breeds this new L.A. Chargers attitude that Jim Harbaugh is loaning, and I think it's a guy that Harbaugh is going to fall in love with. And 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 for me, like I said, um, might be a little bit rich for some people, but man, this is a a an ideal ideal fit. If you ask me, so I, I, I I'm not going to hesitate on that. Um, Tyler Warren's going to be the pick. Green Bay is up. Defense tackle. I don't know. There's a bunch of different ways you can go. Um, definitely not wide receiver. I think they spent some capital over the past couple of years. They got a nice wide, young wide receiver core with a good quarterback that they're not paying. Um, so I'm going to address the other side of the ball. They've been playing more man coverage this year than any other team. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give them Siobhan Ravel from East Carolina. Yes, he tore his ACL early in the season. Um, he's expected to be full go for next year and and even maybe so by the combine. Probably not, but, um, you know, the talent is there. You want to, pre- uh, you know, uh, kind of a longer, pre- you know, more physical press man cover, cover guy to – Play alongside and obviously eventually replace Jair Alexander. Siobhan Ravel, um, to me, is a no-brainer. Best fit for that skill set here 
is Shavon Rowe. Um, Washington also could use another cornerback. You know, I know they just traded for Marshawn Lattimore, who's still relatively young, so um, they might be okay there. Um, you know, they traded away two edge rushers last year, so I'm going to go ahead and replace, you know, try to replace one of them. And here's where I'm going to have Michael Williams come off the board. Um, can do a little bit of everything, you know, can can even line up inside, can stand up, can blitz from the middle, blitz from the outside. Um, they can afford, I think, to have a little bit more um, time and expectation to kind of let him develop and figure out what he's going to become and, and let him f- figure out how to do it. There's probably not many mind defensive minds better than his, you know, head coach Dan Quinn. Um, so I, to me, I think this is a good fit. I'm going to go ahead and, and lock that in. Um, you got Baltimore here. Maybe you watch that Baltimore Cincinnati game and you watch these defensive backs getting torched. And I know that they um, spent a first round pick last year on defensive back. Like, I'm not too sure that I'm not going to go back to that well here. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Like, uh, you know, I, Jade Barron is, is more, I think, of a slot guy. I don't know if that's where they're going to kind of hammer in Ben Morrison. Is he going to go back to school? He's only a true junior, not playing this entire year because of that hip injury. So I'm going to assume that he's going back to school. Um, there's so many different ways you can go here with the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay. I think it's crazy. You know, I think they're going to double down and go on the cornerbacks here. Um, give me Jedi Barron and, and and figure it out whether he plays slot, whether he plays outside. He's he's adjusted very well to the outside. You know, uh, a, a guy, another one of those pieces, um, similar to to. Hamilton that can kind of do a lot of different things. You put football players on the field um, and and things will happen. I don't care if you play him uh, on the slot. I don't care if you ask him to play outside. Um, You know, listen, is is he the best pure, you know, press man guy? No, he's a little bit shorter. He lacks a little bit of that straight line speed. Doesn't flip and run very well, Um, you know, but he's a football player and, 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 and hands down the best, tackler on the perimeter on the edge of all these defensive backs in this class so um, i'm just going to trust that you know you're going to draft a good football player and and uh john harbaugh is going to figure out a way to to utilize him and, and get him going leads me to steelers here 27 um why do receiver is interesting it absolutely is this is where i'm going to have Jalen Milrow come off the board, right? I don't know what they're doing here with the quarterback position, right? I I would assume if they continue this good run that they have, they're going to bring Russ back. Um, Russ himself is getting older, so any contract will be short short in terms and year length. Why not grab a guy like Milrow, let him learn, let him develop? Um, You know, Milrow has an absolute horror on his arm. Um, beautiful deep ball. You obviously know what he can do as a dual threat quarterback. I think his ceiling is through the roof. Um, no, I just think he still needs a little bit time and development to work on the process. And, you know, and, and, and once he speeds up his getting through his reads and, and his progressions, I think that'll help, you know, kind of some of the, you know, quasi accuracy issues that he tends to have. Um, you know, that stuff just needs to be coached out of them. So, you know, if you bring Russ back on, on some sort of bridge deal, two-year deal or something like that to be your starter, one-year deal, two-year deal, and you have Jalen Milrow in there, like I said, I know everyone's going to say, oh, you need a wide receiver. Like, get one in the second round, you know. Um, you know, you get a guy that has the, you know, the talent to be the best overall player in this class five years from now at 27 to sit and learn. Um, good teams have the ability to take – chances on players like this look at when green bay drafted um jordan love they did the same thing to me i love this uh i think Jalen milrow is going to be a um you know a pittsburgh kind of guy i think mike tomlin's gonna kind of like the the grit and the attitude that he plays with he's a captain team leader um knows how to win you know from a winning organization so i like this pick uh i won't i don't want him to start right away he's not a guy i'm gonna turn the keys over to but um, you know, you bring back Russ on a on a bridge deal or, or another, you know, viable quarterback on a bridge deal. 
you let Jalen Milrow sit and learn and eventually turn the keys over to him. Um, yeah, here's where I'm going to have my second running back come off the board for the Vikings. Um, man, I love Caleb Johnson from Iowa, and, and I love the idea of keeping him very close to home here and taking him with the Vikings, but it's hard to deny um, Amari and Hampton here. Um, I think he's worthy of a first round pick. I have a first round grade on him. He's big. He's nasty. I think um, you know he can doesn't have to leave the doesn't have to leave the field. I know Aaron Jones is there. Aaron Jones is getting old. Aaron Jones is on one year deal. Um, you know, Aaron Jones has a, a continuous injury history. It, it's time for some new blood. Um, who you know, may, and maybe you know some young bucks like. J.J. McCarthy and Omari Hampton and Justin Jefferson are, are exactly the formula that you need for this uh, KOC offense to continue to develop and open up for the others. Um, Omari Hampton is worthy of a first-round pick, and I'm going to go ahead and take him off the board right here. Eagles are up. Man, I don't know what to do with the Eagles. You know, uh, to me, it's always the trenches, and yeah, they, they could use another edge rusher, right? Um, I would say so. I don't know if there's one that I absolutely – Love here for them, um, but I think that there's one that's there's that their type, you know, and, and that's going to be Jack Sawyer, um, big, physical, workman like, uh, again, solid on both facets, can get at the quarterback, has to develop more of a of a pass rush plan, doesn't necessarily always have the best one, but um, stout run defender, you know, you know, you're he's high energy, high motor guy. I'm going to come in and, you know, he can give you kind of a different skill set than what you already have or what you hoped that you paid for in Bryce Huff. You know, he doesn't have that, that, that get off, you know, not clearly a get off more, much more of a power rusher than, than finesse. But, you know, Jack Sawyer is going to be a player in this league. Um, To me, that's a no brainer. I shouldn't say that it's, it's, it's a brainer. It's just not a, (laughs) it's not a big brainer. Um, Buffalo's on the clock here. Uh, I don't know if he's still on the board. Did I take Malachi Starks? Because it would be a perfect fit. Yeah, I did. Um, okay. Well, it's, it's easy, easy transition for me. For Buffalo, again, I think that you can go along or, or pick around anywhere on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I think they need some work. This would be a good spot, I think, ben, Benjamin Morrison. If he comes out. Again, there's a good chance he comes back, but uh, you know, you put him in this defense. You know, he'll be your Rasul Douglas, Rasul Douglas replacement, playing next to Christian Benford um, on one side. You got some young, talented safeties in that room. You know, he's going to get coached up um, like hell. And like I said, when he's on the field, and earlier this year, Benjamin Morris. You know, there there's kind of some skepticism. He didn't live up to what he as well as he played last year. And again, you find out afterwards he's dealing with a hip injury. I'm sure that all works itself around. Again, just at this point, good teams can can take shots and, and roll with, you know, in their eyes what I think Buffalo would see as, you know, an improvement, you know, off of, you know, over an aging Rasul Douglas instead of bringing him back. You bring in some new blood, um, you know, and let him battle out with Kyrie Elam if he's back, you know, and, and let, let the best man win. Um, Detroit here at. 31. Um, so I'm going to take Isaiah Bond. You know, they, they're still looking for, I, I still think at times they're missing that, you know, some element in the offensive game. You know, I don't know if Ben Johnson will be back. Um, you know, I, I, I just don't, I don't know what's going on with Ben Johnson. Um, you know, he's going to have his pick of the litter if he wants to be a head coach. Um, Jameson Williams is, you know, you hope to be that, that speed, take the top off the, you know, defense kind of threat for you. And, you know, he's shown flashes of that this year, but the guy just can't stay on the field. Either injury or, or other troubles have, have caused him it, you know. So I don't know if it's a guy that you're going to want to expend a, you know, a, a big second contract to. So at worst, you're getting some, you're, you're building the pipeline, you're building the depth here. And you got Isaiah Bond, who's a guy that can play, you know, the speed, you know, speed plays and, doesn't mean that you, you know, they'll run three wides. They'll run 11 personnel a lot of the time. Um, so you put Isaiah Bond in there. You put Jameson Williams out there. You put, uh, you know, Amon Ra in the slot, however you want to line them up. And, and who are you covering, you know? Oh, and don't forget, they have, you know, arguably, 
you know, a top three tight end in the in the room. Plus, Jamar Gibbs out of the backfield is just as good as a wide receiver. So, um, just a plethora of riches. And I and I think again, it's a it's a spot where it's a position of need. Maybe not a need that you, you know is like dire today, um, but a need that could be dire a year or two from now when when he's you know developed and adjusted to the speed of the NFL game. Uh, and that leaves me here at thirty two. With the Kansas City Chiefs, um, yeah, man, I don't know. I, you know, I, how do you not do? How do you not do it? How do you not do it? You take arguably the best tight end um, in the class, replace your, you know, soon to be thirty-five year old Travis Kelsey, or, or be the next in line for him. Um, yeah, give me Colson Loveland. It's just a, it's just a perfect fit, man. Um, he needs some, you know, he needs some receivers, some guys that can catch the ball over there. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins has been wonderful. Again, he's also aging. You don't know what Rashi Rice or, or his legal troubles is going to lead to. Um, Juju Smith Schuster's, you know, all but done. You got Worthy. Give him, give him Loveland. You know, if not in twelve personnel, he'll be your heir apparent to Travis Kelsey, and you hopefully don't skip a beat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's my top 32. That's my first first round mock of the year. Just for you guys, wanted to get it out. Listen, please, again, if you haven't done so, like, subscribe to the channel. really helps me out. Leave comments. Uh, YouTube loves the comments. I'll talk back to you. I got nothing better to do, man. Um, this is stuff that you're going to see from me and my channel going forward uh, a lot from now on, especially since the Jets stink. It's now time to focus on the draft, and it's go time, man. So, um, again, you can like and subscribe to the channel here. You can follow me on Twitter at DC underscore NY Jets. And until then, draft out.